Yo, 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 yo. Man. All right. Good question from my man, Tim. What do I do and how do I deal with dogs that don't turn out great? Have I ever had dogs that don't turn out great? Absolutely. I'm currently dealing with a litter right now that I have my eye on that I produced not too long ago that I don't, I'll just say up front, I don't like the way it looks like it's going. It's a couple defects there. I believe I, w I went a little bit too tight on this one and we'll see. Sometimes you see the defects then they straighten themselves out. But, uh, this is something that happens. I don't care who you are as a breeder. You can do a breeding that on paper looks like it's going to be everything in the world. It's going to be the greatest breeding of all time. And it happens. You know, for me, it's happened very, very rarely. You know, I think this is the first litter that I've been concerned about in over a decade. But it happens. And all you can do from these situations is, uh, as I've told you guys before, you have your notes. You should keep notes on every litter and uh, you start to um, problem solve. And one of the main ways you problem solve is you look at to see if whatever the defects are, if it's a high rear feed or, or whatever the case may be, you start to see, hey, was this prevalent in anything that I did? Now, of course, with me, I, I know that off the top of my head, no. So if I start to see this, have I crossed the line to where the bloods are meshing too much and it's really the same blood if you look back five or six generations? Because sometimes we won't say that, uh, you know, we, we'll say, oh, it's this blood. But if you look back and you, you're comparing two different bloods, although they have two totally different names, if you look at their ancestors, they come from the same dogs. And that happens a lot in the American bully community. So it's really, you're still like line breeding slash inbreeding in some cases. So, you know, you have to problem solve. And at that point in time, I guarantee all of my puppies for five years for any uh, genetic health issues that would uh, not allow them to be a breedable or showable dog. Um, of course, if they were sold as a pet, they were sold as a pet. So that wouldn't apply. But, you know, when it happens, you just have to stand by your product and you have to be patient, uh, which is a big issue in our community. But you do have to be patient and you really have to... Um, Look and see if you can make these things happen in an appropriate fashion. You know, um, it's it's the only way to do it. You know, if, if you see a problem there, you've got to eliminate it. You know, replace the puppy if the people want the puppy replaced. Most times they will if they wanted to show or breed it. You know, pull the papers on it. Do the responsible thing. Don't try to breed it out. Yeah, you got a little coffer back there. But uh, don't try to breed it out and all that extra shit. Just go ahead and, uh, you know, replace the pup and put good genes back into the gene pool. I don't care what breeder you are. I've talked to breeders who are way more experienced to me than me. And they say it happens from time to time. You know, I know a Rottweiler breeder who's up to 47 years of actual breeding. And he says from time to time, he'll have some two dogs that it's like, this has got to be incredible. And the litter falls flat and it'll have one issue or another. And like you say, when you get to be at a certain level, you know, uh, might be like me that it, it, it's happened to me, in, uh, you know, 10 years apart from each other. But at the same time, you know, it happens and you have to stick by it. You have to stick to the rules. You have to be willing to... Uh, take whatever action is necessary sometimes you know you might be in a situation where i was that that was about 10 years ago where i had several uh, bad cleft palates and i just went ahead and fixed the dogs man it was just one of those things you not fix the dogs i uh i put the dogs down you know i wasn't going through all those surgeries and all of that stuff and trying to make the dog live and I mean i know some people hate to hear that but when it happened like that the puppies were they they weren't healthy you know uh not only did those particular puppies and that wasn't a line breeding that was was even stranger about it but um those puppies uh had a couple kinks had a couple clefts in this particular litter and uh so okay and also i went a step further on that litter is to uh knowing that two of the siblings had those issues the other uh three siblings that were survivors and everything we watched them greatly for like the better part of three years. And uh, we basically 
wanted to see if they passed those issues along before we did anything to the public. So we did test breedings that weren't advertised and just something that sit and let us watch the puppies. That's when I had a lot of land then too. A lot of land, a lot of friends. So it made it easier to do that. But you know, you have to be responsible on how you breed and don't just throw anything out there into the universe to leave other people with problems. You know, from the uh, from the flip side, you know, and I have another video coming up about that, about some of you impatient buyers. Understand that you, you, when you buy a dog from a person, the dog is not guaranteed. You have high hopes, but the dog is not guaranteed to be anything. This is dog world. You can have, like I said, you can have great breedings. I've seen two championship, high quality, well-structured parents put together and puppies come out looking like malamutes <laughs> it happens sometimes so you have to have that patience and understanding that there's nothing guaranteed in breeding man but uh hopefully that helps you out man until next time god bless y'all much love peace